Good glorious morning to you. This is Jonathan with the Stay the Way podcast, and I want to invite you to read through a book in the Bible with me called Proverbs. This is chapter 25, matching up the day of the month with the chapter in Proverbs. And so as I began today, this really just stopped me in my tracks. And you might find this as you read through the word of God, you might just have something that jumps off the page at you, speaks into your soul, and you think, good, my God. Lord, I need to dig into this more. And so that's what's happened to me. I'm going to take you on this journey with me. Let us begin. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth that it brings, the light that it shines, that my thoughts and intentions can be clarified by the beautiful truth of your word. And I thank you and praise you for that. I pray that you would bless anyone who hears this, that you would uplift and encourage them and guide them to a truth from your word that is beyond time. That the only two things that are eternal on this earth are the souls of men and the word of God. And as we take time to put your words in our souls for all eternity, that that would be pleasing and glorifying to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So there's these two lines I'm going to read. Verse one says, these are the Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. So Solomon wrote these. He wrote thousands of Proverbs, but this is a condensed Proverbs, and we get 31 of them that we can apply each and every day. I don't think there's a coincidence in that. But verse 2 of chapter 25 says, It is the glory of God to, but the honor of kings is to search out. So when we consider what is the primitive root is to hide, it's almost to be kept in sin. And so God will conceal things, but the honor of kings is to search it out. So if if I want, I need to search. I need to, to um, they're saying to dig into. It even says to penetrate, like to break off. The, when I think about this in the terms of like a bacteria have this thing called a biofilm on the outside of them. And if the biofilm is intact, it's good for the bacteria. But if you break down that biofilm, If you use an enzyme, like a pancreatic enzyme, those enzymes break down the biofilm and it makes the body accessible, right? As it's, as, as you're working through a bacterial situation, it makes your body accessible to the bacteria and it can literally, then your white blood cells can go in and break down that component and and adjust and literally break down the bacteria and, and use it for your own good. It's basically turning bacteria that were toxic to you into a nutrient by the function of biochemistry. But we'd never know that if not for the study of it and microscopes and digging in and just peeling back layer upon layer of how the biochemistry in our body works. Now, I think that that's glorifying to God because he designed us in such a way that our bodies are designed to heal. Think about it. If you've ever cut your finger, if you've ever had a paper cut, if you've ever had a bruise, does your body just stay in that state forever? Or does it heal? Did you have to do anything to it to get it to heal? Like, of course, over time, those things just naturally heal up on their own because God's designed us to heal on our own. And so when I read this, it's a glory of God to conceal a thing. The concealed thing from a health standpoint is that your body is designed in the image of God and it is in the likeness of God. And he designed it so that it would heal itself. So if we are not healing, there's a reason for it. And it's not because your body is absent of a medication or absent of a surgery. It's because something that your body requires is missing. And so when we look at the body from a a whole body standpoint, are there vitamins, minerals? Is there nutrition, nutrients? Is there a lack of sunlight, right? Vitamin D. All of those things would come together to promote a healing body. And so the honor of a king is to search out this matter. Now, I'm not in trying to do any kind of Bible gymnastics. The way I look at this is that if God has called us as believers to be diligent with everything that he's given us and we honor him, then the promise is that in the millennial kingdom, when we come back to reign and rule, we are reigning and ruling in a sense as a king. This is directly from the hand of God. It's not, it's not Jonathan saying this. It's like scripture outlines the fact that you are to reign and rule and a ruler, the diligence of the ruler is that you search out a matter. 
So you find the truth, whatever that is, you dig in and you find it. And verse three even gives us a little bit of context to it. The heaven for height and the earth for depth and the heart of the kings is unsearchable. It's so difficult to search out your own heart. But if we follow the word of God and take away the dross from the silver, and then there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. So he's refining us. And that is a thing that I can hold on to.